Welcome to Smash University. I'm Charles and today I'm going to be talking about game phases. The way I see it, there's early game, mid game, then there's this weird phase between mid and late game that I like to call the confirm phase just because there's a lot of characters with uh, KO confirms in that phase and then there's late game. I'll be going over each phase and kind of giving you guys a guideline on how to think and strategize which each phase with your characters. So one thing I want to get into before I really like dive into these different phases is that the character you're fighting up against will drastically change your strategies you know, for each phase. So for example, uh, if I'm Fox and I'm playing in the early game, against floaties I can actually up tilt earlier because I'm not negative on hit because they're so floaty. Um, but against fast fallers, if I up tilt any fast faller like pre-20, pre-30%, I usually have to, like, I'll usually just be negative on hit, though most characters have fast enough jabs to just straight up punish Fox if Fox up tilts them and they're fast enough faller. Or it'll be like this weird, like, RPS situation where, you know, Fox can go for a turnaround grab or Fox can just go in the shield if they jab. Like, it's like a weird, awkward position where you don't necessarily get a combo. So be very aware of which characters, like just the character stats, you know, even height, right? Like if, uh, you know, certain characters, they're tall enough for Fox to, you know, for example, get a rising back air in neutral, which is an option, you know, throughout all phases, right? If they're tall enough, Sephiroth, heavies, right? Um, but if they're not tall, there's only a few characters that are tall enough for that. So keep that in mind, you know, the height of a character, the weight of a character, the fast fall, the floatiness of a character. I can just give sprinkles of examples, but these are all things that you should be thinking of when you kind of think of strategies for your character in each of these different phases. All right, now let's get into the actual phases. So the early game phase, um, and I'm going to make a lot of references to Fox because I play a lot of Fox. Um, so obviously try to apply this with your own character as well. Uh, but in the early game, you want to really look for these uh, early game specific combos. Like for Fox, I'm fishing for not so much up tilt. Up tilt's a more of an option when you get into the mid game, right? But I don't want to do it so much early game. Early game, Fox wants to more so go into like back air dash attack, right? or, uh, you know, just uh, auto-cancel down air. It's a great uh, move to hit early game. And now there's going to be moves that are better than others, right? Because if I get a dash attack at zero, uh, it's harder to combo. It's not like usually like a guarantee combo. Like usually you can get like a rising there, but you don't get like a huge opening. Auto-cancel down air, on the other hand, you can get fair into up air or multiple up airs, you know, depending on the weight of the character. But most characters, like there's going to be moves that no matter what the weight or fast fall or floatiness of a character is, if you hit that move, you get a combo. There's just some moves that are like that. And those are moves that you can kind of like universally apply. So for Fox, it's like auto-cancel down air or back air, right? Doesn't matter what the character is. If I hit a back air at zero, I'm definitely getting a dash attack afterwards, right? Um, where on the other hand, you know, up tilt's a little bit more finicky. And those are the kind of moves that you want to kind of feel out with your own character and devise a strategy around. And even more so, you, if you're going to play this game at top level, you're going to need to know what other characters are looking for as well, right? You can't just think about your own character. You have to think about, oh, well, what does Greninja want early game, right? What does, and, and you know, just to, uh, you know, give a little bit more detail, um, early game, I, I usually think around, like, you know, 1 to 30, 1 to 40 percent. Um, that's pretty much the main time for these early percent combos. Uh, and even another example, if I'm Fox and I get a Sour Nair, I can go Sour Nair into grab, but they can spot dodge. It's not like a true combo, especially at zero. Uh, but if I get a hard Nair, I can go into jab, and that's a combo. If I get down Nair, I can go into jab, and that's a combo, except against Bowser because he has tough guy, right? So it's like you can already see just example-wise how I'm breaking down like what moves I'm trying to fish for, and at you know higher levels, my opponent is also going to know what I'm trying to fish for and that's where you know that's where you really get to see the game fleshed out at top level play because you know both players know what their opponent wants at which phases of the game right now let's get into the mid game percentages right that the mid game phase now this is where things like Fox up tilt comes into play right you can really start getting the you know up air up air strings and all that stuff right so just me as Fox if I get a 
grab at mid percent, I'm going to want to up throw, right? Up throw or even Fox's mid percent ledge trapping is strong as well, right? And even trying to set up for positioning for the moves that you want in the mid percentage is really important too. If I want up airs and there's a, I'm on a triplat stage, you know, if I get to grab a Fox, up throw doesn't combo to up air in this game. But if you, you know, set up the situation, potential juggle, right? then you are setting yourself up for success. You're trying to create these scenarios where you're trying to connect your mid percent combos, right? Your, what moves you want at that mid percent. Now mid percent, I feel like is a little, not as finicky as early game. Early game percent is, it's a lot more specific, but I feel like when you kind of get into those mid percents, uh, it, it's not as harsh. Again, you still need to think about all the traits of your opponent's character, and on the flip side, again, you know, what do they want in that mid percent? So pretty, pretty simple overall. It's just, it's pretty much early game, but you shuffle it over one more phase. You have a little bit more percent to work with, and these mid percentage, that's usually when your whole kit is online. Um, at, at least for Fox, when I'm when I'm thinking through a Fox perspective, like all your moves are online at mid percent, right? So. Even when you're thinking of when you're playing against Fox, if you're a fast faller, right, then you know they can't up tilt, which is their fastest option behind. And th this is a very specific example of creating strategies, creating counterplay, depending on the percentage, right? And on top of that, considering all of these factors of like floatiness and fast fall, you also have to consider your rage, right? If Fox has max rage, maybe he can up tilt a little earlier in the early phase or the mid percent phase, right? Now we're going to be start talking about the confirm phase and the late game phase. This is where characters really start uh, differentiating in terms of like when they're strong. Confirm phase, you got characters like Fox, Sheik, uh, that are, you know, obviously pretty strong. They have a lot of KO confirms, right? Things like, you know, drag down up airs and stuff like that are going to be really strong for Sheik in the confirm phase, right? But Sheik is a character that can struggle in the late game. You have a bunch of confirms, but if you avoid those confirms and you're fighting against Sheik, then you are rewarded, right? Because now Sheik is in a position where they, they have to like land a stray hit or something like that. But there are going to be some confirms that last a little longer. So, I mean, even characters like Ike, right? Ike or, you know, Rob, you really want to avoid them if Rob gets a Nair into a side B. You know, Rob can confirm Nair at almost any phase of the game, which makes the move strong. And you can even start, when you start thinking of the game in phases, that's when you can start really differentiating, like, what moves are strong and what moves are not. When they're strong, now, if a move starts being strong at all phases of the game, alert, <laughs> broken move alert, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, Fox, obviously, with the Sour Nair into Up Smash, it's going to be around the confirm phase, right? So you definitely don't want to get hit by Nair against Fox, the Sour Nair at least. Uh, so that's when a lot of people start shielding. You, you take grabs on purpose against Fox, and as long as they don't nail the ledge trap, you come back and then they have to tech chase, right? You're at like 120, 130, they have to get a tech chase. Even if you, if you DI up, uh, they have to like essentially get a read after that scenario, which is how you should be playing against some of these characters that are stronger in the confirm phase. Are you going to avoid Ike Nair, like the plague, at around you know 80% with rage, 90, 100% with no rage? Absolutely, because you don't want to get Nair'd up air, right? So you you have to play around your opponent's like stronger moves, especially the confirm moves at that confirm percent, and really strategize around that and take take other hits on purpose or play to a point where like they have to hit you with other moves to get you out of that range and once you do that then you're in the late game phase right you you want to really work around your opponent's confirms and you also want to try and condition to nail your confirms in those confirm phases because this is the tipping point in a lot of matches if you're able to get past this confirm phase and get into late game and kind of force your opponent to land a stray hit that's when you can start getting a ton of mileage, especially at top level play and, you know, either get the stock first, get a bunch of damage. And at top level play, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy to see someone pass 150 because at that point, your opponent's KO options are severely reduced. Even though you're at a higher percent, your opponent's KO options are reduced if their confirms aren't online because confirms are usually quicker moves that lead into KO moves, right? 
quicker, safer moves with less lag. Now, when you force your opponent to start throwing out more committal moves to get the KO because they just need a straight hit, you know, that's when it can be can be a little tougher depending on character, right? We're into late game. The confirms are offline, usually starting at like 130-ish plus. I would say that's usually late game. Obviously, this these numbers flex to, from character to character, but you know, let's just say 130 plus uh, for majority of the cast. Now we're in late game. This is where the stray hits, like the Bowser fairs or the Pyra fairs, the Pyra, literally anything, right, uh, are going to be very very strong. Um, and even characters, you definitely see these uh, phases really affecting characters that can switch. Mithra Pyro is a huge example. Pokemon Trainer is a huge example. Um, obviously, Pokemon Trainer, you're usually doing it for the weight, but it's like, okay, I didn't get my, you know, Edge Guard at with Ivysaur. Now it's like kind of late game. Charizard's a great late game character. You're throwing out stray moves like back air. You have up smash out of shield, right? Very strong out of shield option, and you also just have a throw that KOs at later percent. Um, having these stray moves or just throws that KO at later percents, or you're going to be extremely great at late game. Ness is another character, extremely great during the late game because you don't really need to confirm anything. All your moves are just really strong. So, and you have a back throw that KOs as well that your opponent has to respect. So, all these things are going to make certain characters stronger in the late game. Whereas characters like Sheik and Fox, for them, they they do have great like stray hit moves, but they're more stronger in an environment where you can KO your faster moves into a KO move because it's just harder for them and it's a little bit more committal for them to get you know KOs at the later percent. But you look at a character like Diddy Kong, Diddy Kong or Rob where they kind of have these confirms, like they have these moves where they're just good at any time, right? If a Diddy gets a down tilt at like 130, 140 and you're at the edge, like down tilt in the back air, that, that moves like Rob down tilt or Diddy down tilt. Well, Rob down tilt more so causes tech chases, but like Diddy down tilt is a prime example of Diddy is or, or that move specifically has confirms at the late game. Now, if your character has confirms in the late game, like you're confirming KOs from like safe, quick moves at like 130 plus, that's a very strong aspect to have. Um, yes, you're KOing at a later percent, but being able to have low risk high reward at those later percents is a very strong aspect to having a character. Um, obviously you can also just have like safer moves that just KO, right? Um, you know, Rob Backer is a great example of a move that's pretty safe uh, and it's a stray hit that KOs. So definitely knowing, like understanding why those kind of moves are strong in the late game or what strategies are strong or what just stray moves are strong in the late game will generally help you a lot when you're strategizing or just in those like, you know, really intense game three, game five, last talk, last hit moments, um, really understanding what your opponent's outs are and what your outs are as well. And that's where, you know, your play can definitely start elevating in terms of just being able to understand the different phases and strategizing accordingly to those phases. All right, so that's it for game phases. Obviously, I wish I could go into detail about every single character in the game. I kind of was just going off of characters that I have a little bit more knowledge than um, compared to the others or just like meta characters in general. I know I gave a lot of like Fox examples or Diddy examples or Sheik examples. Obviously, uh, I play Fox and the people I play with play those other characters. So um, definitely kind of used a lot of those examples. Um, but I hope you still got a lot out of it. I hope the, ma the main concept of the video is to help you start thinking in the way of like, okay, what do I want early? What do I want mid? What do I want for confirms? What do I want late game? And then that's when you can start really understanding your character and start like nitpicking what to do in certain matchups, right? Like, oh, this is a floaty. Like I can up tilt earlier as Fox. Oh, this is a fast faller. I can't up tilt till X percent unless I have rage. Then I can up tilt at Y percent. And yeah, it gets stupid complicated. But uh, I mean, it, it will definitely help you to be a better player understanding the phases that's definitely the first step into it and then you can really start getting into like what you can and cannot do what's good and what's not good for you and your opponent for specific matchups but if you enjoyed the content make sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video class dismissed